Hello, it's Luke for Divine Star, and I just want to make this quick video talking about the newest updates to the engine and where it's going to be going in 2023. Uh, and then after that, after my little brief discussion, I'm going to show off some sounds in the engine and the new improved infinite world generation. I fixed a lot of bugs. It runs really awesome. So the first thing I want to show you, of course, is the... Uh, issues on GitHub. So if we look here, the pre-alpha 1.3 checklist is almost done. I added this last little thing because I broke the server example uh, because I changed the way voxel data is stored. Instead of storing it in two 32-bit numbers, I'm storing it across four 16-bit uh, numbers. And uh, yeah okay you have four uh 16-bit numbers so that way i can actually uh, do some advanced things and just call certain parts of the chunk data if it's not needed like if this chunk doesn't have any secondary voxels it just won't need that data and that should reduce the uh, ram usage by a lot uh, it shouldn't affect the uh, saving on the disk too much, but it should help out with RAM. Uh, so this is the pre-beta release checklist. So this is just stuff that I'm trying to uh, work through before I release in beta. I might not get to everything, uh, but I'm pretty much there. Uh, there's still just a lot of things that I can work on uh, that won't affect the outward API so much. But my biggest push in the last few updates has just been solidifying the API and making it as nice as possible, as just user friendly as possible. Uh, just because it just I want people to actually uh, enjoy using the engine, including me. I want to be able to just sit down and just not have the engine get in the way of what I want to do, and just the tool set to be really just pristine. But you can go on the uh, uh, repo here and just look at this stuff. Uh, some of these were not put in by me, but I usually use the issues to keep track of these really big updates that I'm doing. Um, another thing that I did recently uh, was implement floating origin. So with that, I was actually able to go out to 2.5 billion meters out in either direction. So in infinite row generation. So it's, yeah, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> I'm not going to complain <laughs> about that side. But anyway, let's look at this. This is the infinite world generation example with the player. So we're just going to walk around for a bit and Yep, there's those sounds. Uh, my good friend uh, Tyler Quinn made those sounds for me. Uh, there, not every sound where I'm gonna keep. I had some changes from that he's gonna get to me, uh, but m like 99% of them are awesome and I love them. Yeah. So we'll, we'll hear more as we go through. I still need a water sound and all that. You can see the world loading around me a little bit. But yeah, you can see we're running at 60 FPS and we got crazy terrain going on. We have shader effects. Um, Although I just noticed that these plants aren't moving. So I'm going to look into that. <laughs> it might have to be do something with the uh, model view projection and the shader. I might have to do something special. Okay. Uh, let's use this one. Yeah, this is one of my favorite sounds.
That is so sweet. Like when I first started this project, I didn't even think I would get this far and I would be able to explore cool stuff like this. Of course, when I made the generation of this world, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just <laughs> sprung it together. Right, well, here's some Perlin noise. Let me uh, see what happens. That is so sad. So blow up stuff. I made the explosion smaller because you know it'll take out an entire world and one button press isn't <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, you get the point. Like I'm, I could literally walk around for a hundred years. <laughs> so. Okay. So from this point, um, I'm going to get the game out. I mean, I'm going to get the engine out in the beta. And then I'm going to work on uh, Dream Space Infinite, which is going to be the alpha version of the game that I want to make. But that's going to be completely free. I'm going to put it online. There's going to be a server people can join, but you can also download the client. There might even be a web page you can go play it on. So that will be free. Uh, people can check it out. Uh, the source code will be open so you can look at how I'm using the engine and all this stuff. I'm going to treat that as the prime example of how to use Divine Voxel Engine. Uh, so after I get that out, you know, it, it won't be too hard. It's not going to be too much different from this example other than some actual, maybe some game mechanics and all that. The After that, I'm going to be working on Imperium, Imperium Crystal and Dread which is going to be kind of a total, uh, excuse my language, a total mindfuck <laughs> from <laughs> this. I, uh, yeah, I know a lot of people say, like, this looks like Minecraft, you're just making Minecraft again, and it's just, uh, I, don't, I don't think those people really understand the kind of whole different vibe that I'm going for the Minecraft and the whole kind of different game mechanics and all that that I have planned. Uh, you know, it's a, if you want to think about it, uh, Morio is a 2D voxel game. <laughs> Every level is a grid of data that you interact with. So a voxel game is basically that, but three-dimensional. So uh, I think there is a lot of possibility in that realm. So, yeah, and I... Uh, what I think what makes this engine special, per se, is that uh, it's truly multi-threaded. If you put it on a server with 32 cores, it can use all 32 cores. And two, it's written a second. It's written in TypeScript. It's a lot easier to use. It's a lot more user approachable. You know, it's just. Uh, the development experience is sublime. If you use it in VS Code, you get awesome autocomplete, and if you use it with a compiler, you get compiler errors. So it just ha it's just beautiful. It's, I love it. Uh, I have worked with other languages before, uh, not just JavaScript or whatever. Uh, all the shaders I wrote myself, uh, besides some, <laughs> some really insane math functions and all that, that would, you know, written by a PhD person. <laughs> uh, but the shaders are all like strongly typed, language really close to C, and I learned that kind of stuff in college and all that. I, I really like uh, GLSL, actually. I really, but that's a whole different story. Um, but yeah, so eventually I'm going to be pretty much not talking about the engine unless I have some other major updates down the road, and it's just going to be about my game the games that I'm making, all that kind of stuff. The whole tone of this channel is going to change. I might still have things where I talk, but I just set up another channel just for I could just talk and do all that kind of stuff. I don't really want to get into 
making high production vlog videos uh, about my work and all that because to me what I want to focus on is my work not the videos I don't want to focus on my social media presence <laughs> I want to focus on my code on the thing I want to make I don't care how many people have subscribed I don't care how many people like or what the hell ever uh, right now everything uh, I'm not really concerned with this is just the beginning 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 of what I'm doing and what my plan is but we'll see uh, gets me up in the morning keeps me happy so that's all that really matters uh, but thank you for watching and uh, happy holidays and I will see you in the next video